In this video, we're going to focus on how we can add up here the data labels here specifically and then have it as a total sum here. You can see here, this is 34, which is 9 plus 25. And the same here as well. However, here we only have one data set and then it will calculate accordingly and put it nicely with it as well. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to explore how to place one total sum data label on top of a stack bar chart in Chart.js. First thing what we need is, of course, to get our default code, which you can find in chartjs3.com, getting started with this specific link, which you can also find in the description box. Let's scroll down here and then just copy this entire chunk of code here. Let's copy this. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video that explains it all. So then I'll just paste this all in here. And once I did that, go up back, cut out that title and put it in here. Save and refresh. There we are. So now we have this, but what I wanted is a stack bar. So we're going to stack them up. So we're going to scroll down here, and then here in the data set, I'm going to duplicate this, comma, paste. And then what I will say here, this will be the black sales, and then I'll just make this black. By getting the last color at the bottom, this is a black color. Then here I'll just say this is the red sales, and it will get the first color of our array, which is a red color red sales and of course here I want to make this slightly different so I'm going to say here this will be just always nine very straightforward nothing fancy you can also see a difference in the values so if I save that refresh there we are so we have now two data sets but they're not yet stacked so I'm going to stack them and then what I want to do for Sunday I will make an exception here that Sunday we don't have any data so that will mean that we only have here six data and that requires a certain level of challenge that we're going to cover as well. So here we have this, then we have here the scales, we're going to say x, we're going to say here stack equals true, comma, here as well, comma, let me say here again stack equals true, comma, save, refresh, there we are. So now we have a stack bar chart, and now it's time to put in the data labels. So for that, I'm going to use a specific plugin, and you can find that in cd, cdnjs.com, chart.js plugin data labels so this is the official website but for some reason my uh, at least for me my provider just doesn't allow me to go on netlify anyway doesn't matter so much what we need is basically this javascript file copy this and then what i want to do here is go scroll up and after the chart.js library has been loaded i want to add up this specific javascript library which is the Charges plugin data labels. Why after? Because this is dependent on the Charge.js library. So it needs to load here certain variables that must be already loaded before this starts. So if I save this, refresh, nothing happens. Why? We need to activate the plugin or register the plugin. So we're going to scroll down here and then it's going to look here in the option, comma, I'm going to say your plugins. And then what I will do here is bracket, say charge data labels that is the command to register the plugin so it will be activated so if i refresh now there we are so now we have the first part so what i want to do now is push it to the very top here so because it's a stack bar chart it will implement on every one of them so let's start to do that first and later on we're going to remove the item that we don't need so in here in the options we're going back here, you see the, here the scales, we're going to put a comma here, and then we're going to here put in your plugins. And in here, we're going to use the specific commands that are built in for the chart data labels plugin. And in this case, we have now, because we registered, we are it allows us now to use a new object that is built in, it's called data labels. And this object is, of course, built in due to this JavaScript library we just added. So now we have this object. And then what I want to do first is we want to say anchor. I'm going to say this end. So we want to position the value here. So if I do this, you can see here now what is happening. It pushes a bit more to the very top, or at least uh, close to the top, where it recognizes the starting point of that bar. So then what I want to do is I put here enter, and then I'm going to say align, because right now it's still exactly on, in the center of that. Part, but I want to say align to the top. By doing this, 
If we don't come on here, save that refresh. You can see here now we are nicely on top here. So everything is nice except we have this one here. So now what we need to do is we need to start working on a bit more complicated matter. And that is in the formatter. The formatter allows us to display the value here in a way we want. So we could control anything we want in here, but we need to have a few parameters. This, this is basically a, a format, changing the format basically, but you could see this is a callback functionality. So I'm going to say here three items, or sorry, two items, value, comma, context. So these two are extremely important. And then what we need to do here, of course, because it's a callback, we need a uh, arrow functionality here or a uh, arrow expression function. So once I have this here, what I want to do just now, very simple, is do a console log and say value. If I save this, refresh, and then open up our console log, you can see here it grabs everything. If I hover over it, it will trigger the specific item. So you can see here it will trigger and it shows all the values here nicely. So now we have one part, but we're not done here. Because what we need to do now is we want to have a sum value. So that would mean I want to have 9 plus 18 would be here 27. So how do we do this? Well, to do this, we need to work with basically a for each array. So let's start to work on that. And I'm going to say, oh, before we even do that, I want to show you context as well, because context will be important for us later on. So if I refresh, open up, you can see here, we get the object, and we get all of this information, but what we will need is the chart, which is basically all the chart data of this specific uh, canvas. This is very, very important because then we can go quickly to the data sets here to extract the values and that's what we're going to do now. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, we're going to say constant and let's give this a data set array. We're going to create this array and then what I want to do here is I want to go to the very, very top here to start work on the data sets and we are able to go on these data sets. So how do we do that? So what I want to say here is I'm going to get here the context, remember, that's what we had. And then the other one is here dot chart. And that's basically now what I need here. So I say dot chart. And then from here I can go, because now we're back into basically the starting point here of my chart. Then I can go directly to the data. And from data, we can go to data sets. So that's what we're doing here now. We say data dot data sets. And then I will not say which index. No, I say dot for each, so we can loop through both data sets. And then we're going to start working on this. So we're going to say here for the, this will, we will just use a shorthand data set, which would basically mean this here, all of them, but then for each individual data set. All right, so then we're going to put in here a arrow functionality again. And then within here, we can start to do something. So what I want to do here now, is just do a console log and show you what this data set basically is. If I save this, refresh, there we are. You can see here what, what is happening. It starts here and it's a red sales, black sales, and then uh, I think here we have something else in console log. There you are, the context. I'm going to remove that. Save again, refresh. So now we get only our data sets here. Beautiful. And if I click on this, we can see here we get the data. Here we only have six or length of six, which means because an array count. It has zero base calculation, so we start at zero and ends here at five. But this is six items. But this one here, which is the red sales, has including Sunday, would mean seven data points here. And as you can see here, length of seven. Beautiful. So now we have this, and now we can start to work on the more advanced part. So what I'm going to do now is we have this array here. So what I want to do is I want to grab here specifically an item. So how do we do this? Going to say here dot data because here we are still in the data set. And then here here dot data, and then the dot data here we want to put in basically our index, but we cannot do it like this. So if I do like say zero, all right, and I may what I could do even here is this. And what I'm going to do here I'm going to graph this. Let's say here dot push. I'm going to push this item here. So push basically means putting a value into the array. That's that's what it does. So it will, it will look through two of these items and we'll push them both in there. And I want to show you this so you have an understanding where we are or what we're doing. So now we have this, all right, so come here. And then here, I'm just going to say here, 
will be console log and let's grab this array save that refresh and as you can see here now we're getting two values exactly but of course in this case we only get two values of what exactly the very first one here which is this here 9 and 18 which is correct because we only have here a hard-coded zero so now how do we soft code this to soft code this you might say we can do this index but we can have also another way which is more more trustworthy in this case would be the context itself so what that means is if I go back here to console law you have here the context I'm going to show you the item that will become very important. I'm just going to hide these console logs. So save this and just check on this one. Save, refresh. There we are. So if I click on this, look what we have here. Data index 6. And you have also data set index 0. It will indicate basically which one it is of one of these in that. But that doesn't matter because I only want the data index. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to say yeah, dot this. All right. Cut out that. And then what I want to hear is now I'm going to change that, change this, and then here if I show this now, we should see now a loop in every individual item. All right, so there we are. We get probably too many. Let me just hide this. Say that so we can only see this one here, the data set array. There we are. So look what we get. We get everything here, but there's one issue here, undefined. And the reason why it's undefined is because this one has none no other item so this would mean we must do here something and that something would be to remove this item here if the condition is undefined so let's do that right now so what i'm going to do here now is just create a simple if statement and this if statement here will do the following say the data set dot data and then here of course the item itself we can just grab this we're going to say if this item is not equal to and remember undefined is a variable it is not a string so you cannot do it like this undefined it's a variable meaning it is truly like this it recognizes this variable so if i do this then it will filter out any item that doesn't match our condition so we want to put that in there and let's clean that up save that then refresh and now, as you can see, we have all these values, and in the number 9, if I hover over it, you will see only one single value. All right, so we get now the very important information. Now we can easily sum all of this. So let's start to work on that. So what I want to do now is I'm going to create a sum total functionality, or basically a array reduce method. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say a function. And in this function, let's remove this console log here as well. It has no more value for us function will be called total sum total sum here consists of two of variables or parameters which is the total comma and the data point so the data point will be the data set array or each individual of that and then the total will be the ones that are being plus with that so this is very important so then we're going to say here return total plus whatever the data point is based on the array meaning that if you have more values on the array it will automatically scale and if you have lesser it will just reduce itself because of the undefined filtering so now we have this but of course it doesn't show yet anything so what i'm going to say here now is let and let's give this here sum which is the value that i want which will be the following we're going to grab here the data set array. This is the array we created. Dot reduce the reduce method, which will basically be directly connected with this functionality, which will calculate the array and reduce it into one single value. So we're going to say here total sum, which is the function, comma, but the starting value is zero. So we start with zero, and then from there on, we add up whatever is in our array. So once I did this, here we can say now for example return sum of course we're not done but i'm going to show you this save refresh so now as you can see we have now the total sum which is correct because 18 plus 9 equals 27 12 plus 9 equals 21 and etc etc including number 9 here so there's no error and no issue with it however there's one problem here you can see on the red one here it has now two items i don't want this so now i need to remove that one as well 
So how will we do that? Well, basically, we need to use now here another if statement. And this if statement will basically look at the array length here. Remember, we have two items or one. So if we have only one item, it would be index 0. If you have two items, index 1 or data set 1, so you can see here, and this other one will be data set 0. So we're going to do now a nice formula. And this is the formula. We're going to say here, uh, let's do an if statement. Say if, and then we're going to say here, if the context dot data set index which indicates how many which data set we are. I think I haven't shown you this, so maybe it's probably a good idea to show you what this is. Let me first display this to you. It's exactly the same with the data index, but this is the data set index. So if I refresh here, you can see here zero and one. So it recognizes and as we hover over, it will pinpoint which data set we're hovering on. So then you have understanding of that. All right, so then we have this if statement. So if this is the case, and then we say equals strip. What I want to do now is I want to grab here uh, the data set array, and then we're going to say dot length minus one. This is very important. We need to reduce it with one because if not, it will count one or two. But remember, a array starts with zero, so zero and one. So that's the difference. That's why you have here minus, reduce it with one value, or one point, so it will match nicely with the index of the array. So once we have this, if this is the case, what I'm going to do here is we're going to say return sum. Else, we're going to say here, very simple, return nothing at all. I don't want anything to be shown. Or we can even maybe hide this. Let's see if that works. A refresh. There are that doesn't work, so we need to just do it like that. Force it in blank. There we are. So now we have this here, and this basically helps us to create now our item here beautifully. And if I change the values here, so let's say here, uh, let's make this 25. Save that. Refresh. You can see here this increases nicely, and everything is being summed up nicely as well. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to know even more things, for example, you want to have a Hoover effect and changing the values, I have still some other topics about uh, the chart as data labels, which is one of the others, this one here, on how to change the data label values on Hoover on a bar chart in ChartJS. I recommend it as well, where you can create an interactive value showing something else when a user hovers on a specific bar.